Okay guys, here we are today. This is um, uh, Grace Spirit of Truth. This is number 26. Now guys, I was just going to jump in it today. However, before I did jump into this, guys, I have to bring up some stuff I've been seeing on YouTube. And I ask you to bear with me for a few minutes. Sudan. Niger, uh, Nepal, Pakistan, Mexico, Italy, Spain, Germany. Uh, the U.S. is starting to feel some things. Canada, hyperinflation. Venezuela, out outright riots. Egypt. Uh, the list can go on and on. And I, I know I've mentioned this to you before, but today... I'm asking you to pray for me. I'll tell you why. I was tuning in some YouTube, see how the situation was in other parts of the world, and I saw three starving children, nothing but bone, laying in the dirt. Um, and there were people around. They were crying and so forth, which I'm glad about that, that they had a heart. But while this other little girl was watching her two little brothers dying in the dirt, she took this extra long walk in Africa to try to find water. She couldn't find any food. But she brought water back to wash her dying brothers. These were just little seven, six-year-olds. They, they were nothing but bone. Why I want you to pray for me is I got mad at the spectators. Because they had all these people watching the children dying in the dirt. What got me angry is nobody was running to help. Nobody was offering some food, a little bag of rice, something, an apple. Nourishment, liquid. And I ask forgiveness because none of them looked that lean to me. So I got mad a little bit, so I ask you forgiveness for that. I shouldn't have got angry at it, but when I see people starving in the dirt, laying there, just, they're almost gone. People who could help, didn't help. And they were too far away for me to help. I had just asked the wife to make me an egg sandwich because I was upstairs I got a little sweaty because it's very hot that's why I'm wearing this I lost my appetite <laughs> didn't eat the egg sandwich I gave that one to the Lord and I'm certainly going to start sponsoring a, a child a hungry child there's they're all over the world listen if that wasn't bad enough and I say again if that wasn't bad enough watching animals just drop die but the kicker people you are in the last days these are the beginning of sorrows take it take it you got to accept this because when you start seeing Hillary Clinton Obama various heads of state and the Pope and every other person I, I can't even think of all of them given the devil sign they showed a picture of the Pope in the Catholic Church with the upside down cross behind him you don't think you're in the end times this country used to go all out of their way to, to make food drops to these starving people no one has done that except Colombia open its borders up so the starving Venezuelans could get some food I saw Egyptian women climbing over these piles of human flesh to get to a window to get a piece of bread. A young man who got a piece of bread to take it home to his kids who were hungry got stabbed, killed for a piece of bread. 
You don't think you're in the end times? And had you noticed that lately all these failing states around the world, guys, they are a route. Libya is now one. Liberia, another one. Syrian children I saw on TV picking from the dirt little crumbs of bread to make a dirty water soup with it. Their mom gave up on them and left. You don't think the, the Lord God of Israel is not outraged about this? The love of many growing cold. Exactly like it said. I got mad. I like to think it was a righteous anger, but... Did you notice that the militaries of these failing states are involved in the policing and in keeping everybody in order? There was a situation in Venezuela. These ladies, these men, these, these families, an 82 year old, I mean the, of all ages, waiting by a distribution center that the National Guard of Venezuela was supposed to drop off some chicken, some flour, something for them to eat. You know what happened? When the trucks, truck, truck or trucks, I don't know if it was one or two, when it showed up, the Coast Guard told them to keep going. Don't stop. Is it any wonder why they're killing dogs, cats, and any other thing that moves? You don't think this is coming to the United States, guys? And I have a message for my sister's husband. The Catholic Fellowship is the whore of Babylon. You heard me right. Anyone that can give those kind of devil signs, upside down crosses, pedophile priests, having an insistence on calling them father, confessing your sins to a man, prostrating themselves as statues, that is not the Christian faith. And all I can say to this individual, you better wake up because the very thing you're kissing may be the Antichrist. I'm telling you now, you better wake up, mister, and look at these signs around you. And I'm telling you, in love, you better start researching this. I could not get over how many of the officials that are running this government are blatantly giving hi-fi devil signs knowing exactly what it means. The very institutions that were meant to safeguard our Constitution and our civil rights are the very things, and I mean things, they stop being human the minute they start worshiping the creature. And now, the United States is going to reap what it sowed. It's happening now, people. You gotta wake up. FEMA camps, they are not someplace just to put grandma or grandpa or the poor person down the street you got tired of seeing and you just did want to waste your time giving him a dollar or two. Don't you understand what happened to this country? It's now turned into Nazi Germany. Late 30s. If you pray for anything, guys, you better pray for a God to allow a limited exodus. Not just of the Christians, not just of the Jews, but people who are now starting to wake up and saying something might be wrong. I saw a forecast of drought 
They started, I think it was in 2008 or 2009. They went on year by year by year. Do you realize that the United States is almost a dust bowl? There is nothing. I mean, the drought of this country this year was unbelievable. You ought to see these things. It hasn't hit yet. But it's going to, and it start. You aren't you feeling the pinch in the in the supermarket? Haven't you noticed that the very things you used to buy that were big bags and big jars are now the same price, if not more, but you're getting half the size. That's the beginning of it. There's not enough food for the world. And guys, I'm not trying to get on a high horse here. And the reason why I am trying to be careful is because, you know, the Father said it would happen. Jesus said it would happen. It's just when you start seeing it happen, it's very sad. You might count me as just another fanatic preacher on YouTube, along with a lot of others that are trying their best to convey to you what exactly is happening. And most Americans, guys, are not going to believe it. They're going to think everything is going to be fine. We're printing worthless currency. As those states fall one by one around us, where do you think some of the... Um, Debts were. China, Mexico, Russia, all these, there's others breaking away from the U.S. currency. Mexico says no thank you. What do you think is going to happen? Something's going to be staged, a false flag, something is going to happen. And you can expect it's going to be by the end of this year or the onset of 2017. I do believe people... If you're on food stamps, you better get those foods, those little pantries. You need something. Otherwise, Uncle Sam and Aunt Martha is going to be more than happy to open up FEMA's doors and say, Come on in. We got some food for you. It's going to cost you more than you think. And we've gone through this. You know what Uncle Sam isn't telling everybody? Uncle Sam is not telling everybody that the massive die-offs on the planet. Look at Africa. Just type in die-offs, guys. If you don't believe what I'm saying, type in animal die-offs. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life, ever. And yet, Zephaniah, Hosea said the fish would be taken away too. Not like in Noah's day, guys. It was anything to breathe. Fish was never mentioned. That's why you know you're in the end times. That's why you know you're at the beginning of sorrows. And how many earthquakes have been happening? They're just one, by, one after another. What about the riots? The violence? And I saw something very disturbing that children are losing their innocence. I didn't even want to look at that. Do you understand what's happening? Is anybody paying attention? There are a lot of preachers on TV that have gone out of their ways. Paul Begley, Trey Smith, has tried to explain things. Uh, there's Jason, uh, he has a tag number or something like 777. Informative. The man is trying his best. People are trying their best to wake the public up because right now it's sleepy time in the US. And you gotta wake up guys, you have to wake up. This is no joke. The world is starving now. 
we're not talking just plagues of Egypt anymore, guys. We're talking about the world is going to get a wake-up call from the Heavenly Father very soon. And no, the enemy thinks he's planned everything, but God already knew what was going to happen. Look in your Bible. Revelations. Famine. Famine and pestilence is going to take out a third. What we throw away in the dumpsters from a McDonald's or a Burger King, a Pizza Hut, you name it, McDon uh, a Dunkin' Donuts, Mr. Donuts, the grocery stores would have fed Venezuela. That's my opinion. Every day. The waste is sinful. But never hit home until I saw three kids near death in the dirt in the dirt too weak to lift their head they were crying when their sister was trying she was only eight years old to wash them she couldn't feed them she had nothing to give and you have these people standing around well dressed watching it watching it Hundreds of millions of tons of animals are dying. That's what they're not telling you. Hundreds of millions of tons of animals. In one instant, 45,000 cattle just dropped dead. You don't think that's going to have an effect on the world food globally? Hundreds of tons of fish. And here's something. Do you remember when uh, Moses touched Pharaoh's waters and the, it would all turn blood? Do you remember that? Even in their containers, their pots of water, blood. So I found this biblical when even the fish hatcheries, the fish farms, tons and tons of fish died in the fish farms. There's so many different animals, I could never mention them all. Most of them we eat regularly. That's why there's not enough food anymore in the world. That's one of the things the Lord warned about. The United States is now a hot zone. There's no food. It can't be grown. The, the crops are drying up. And it's not just the United States, it's everywhere, guys. Everywhere. This is the last harvest. The Lord is coming back. And if you haven't met the Lord yet, guys, I really, really urge you to ask Him into your heart. Ask the Lord Jesus for forgiveness for your sins. Ask the Lord God, come down. Indwell in, the, in you. Lead you. There's two sides. There's good or they're bad. There's no lukewarm. I guarantee you, you want to be on the Lord's side. You want to be saved. Don't you think for one minute you don't because my friends, you have no clue what's out there. It's going to get bad. Now, I had to share. Let me explain. I was like I was. I had a different agenda today for where I was going with because of the grace of God, Spirit of Truth. But sometimes, you know, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus said unto them. Do you see all these things? Truly I say to you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. You see where I'm going with this, right? And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall all these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, the second coming? And at the end of the world, and of the end of the world. 
And Jesus answered and said to them, Now listen, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars, rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, by no means. Nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Have you noticed lately? There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, that may just sound like a sentence to you, but that's going to take out about a third of the population of this planet. So figure roughly 7 billion people, a good 2 billion. Does that wake us up? All these are the beginning of sorrows. My friends, take my word on this one. You are in the beginning of sorrows. Plant feet first down in it. Pestilences. I've never seen so many earthquakes as typhoons, hurricanes. India, who normally has more than enough water, drying up. One of the few countries that could feed its population is having troubles. Because the U.S., which was the breadbasket for the world, drying up. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. I bet you didn't know something. Did you know that there's a, a list? It's a public document. I, I, I'm not sure, but I think it was uh, Jason A777. You might want to look that up. And it's a, it's a government document. Christians are right up there. Not Catholics. As a matter of fact, if you're not a Catholic, you're a target. Now, why would they want to target Christians? There's a hit list. Those FEMA camps are not there as restaurants for the poor. There is an agenda. And guys, if you don't start opening your eyes, gee. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Remember what the Lord says, those that kill you think they've done God's service? What group does that sound like? You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Again, what group? You've been listening to the news at all? Do you ever uh, check out YouTube? It's not owned by the globalists. You know how many Christians are dying around the world right now? We can say we're Christians, but it's a different story if you're right out there in the field. We haven't spilled blood. What do we complain about? Missing a meal? We haven't yet suffered under persecution or dropped one drop of blood yet. But my friends, it's coming. They shall, and then shall many be offended, offended, and shall betray one another. I really don't know what that means, I, but I, it doesn't sound good, does it? Kind of sounds to me like maybe brother and sister, they're supposed to be in Christ, maybe somebody gets offended and turns on the other. But what do I know? And shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise. Just because they can bring fire down from the sky doesn't make them true. Just because they can raise up somebody uh, or heal them or whatever, it doesn't make them true. Hun. Love, love is a deciding factor. They'll rise and they'll, show, they'll deceive many.
remember Pharaoh and uh, his sorcerers and magicians, whatever they were, they could copy some of the stuff, right? And because sin shall abound, guys, I don't watch TV for a reason. Everywhere you look, I don't have to go into that, especially for the, the male population. The love of many shall wax cold. Why do you suppose Jesus says, don't grow weary in well-doing? For in due season you shall reap if you do not give up. Faint means give up. Don't grow tired of helping someone, guys. Is there going to be times you might get a little, you know, uh, well, but remember Jesus was at the door. That's how you got to look at it. No matter what, just say, well, that's the Lord at the door. He's, he needs a, he needs a few eggs. Dave, don't be cheap. Don't offer the one egg they asked for. Do what the wife did, give them, the, you know, 18 of them. For in doing that, you not only show the Lord you're honoring Him. Remember, He says, but, but when you've done it for one of these, you've done it for me. That is a Christian. Not raising up, doing this, or, hey, guess what I can do? A lot of show, no glow. Remember? Remember? Last show, no glow. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. You ever heard about the patience of the saints? Might I share just an example? The Lord was brought before Pontius Pilate, and no matter how he screamed and yells, Jesus kept silent. When he was brought before Caiaphas, he was struck with, a, I think, a bat or something across the bridge of his nose. That's cartilage. Not a bone of his would be broken. But he never raised his voice. And how many others, guys? Myself, I believe that the Holy Ghost just puts you in a state of peace that I think your heart's breaking more than anything else when it hit you. What do you think? Because all you wanted to do was tell them about salvation. Right? Maybe that's why the Lord says do good to those that persecute you. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And let me tell you something. The last great harvest is about to begin. There are those I'm talking to right now that has a call in their life to be a prophet, to be a minister, to be a teacher, gifts of healing, evangelists, apostles. And if you got something on your heart from Christ himself that says, look, you're going to North Korea, you're going to China, you're going to the Philippines, you're going to India, you're going. Have the church pray over you. This is the last great harvest. Let me tell you something else. That's also the time that those trumpets, those bowls, those scrolls, those seals are going to be popped, blown, opened. Guys, truly. And you're going to say to me, well, Dave, how they, they're not going to listen to me. They are when these things start going on. Am I right? But I'm scared, Dave. Who's not? But you know what you do? You ask Jesus to make you not scared. And what do he say, guys? He says, do not fear. Let not your heart be troubled. And don't be afraid. If you believe in God, he says, then believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions and I've already been there making you a place. You do it because you love him. 
first he went up he sent down the means for you to go he's gonna walk his life out through you guys think about that for a moment if our Savior is gonna is right here Lord right here and he's gonna send me to India and I'm gonna be talking to somebody about the gospel Look, I'm going to be 65. The Lord said this, guys. I kid you not. I'm going to be 65 when my mission is, is had the mission ended. My guess is I think I'm going to sleep. But he didn't say I was dying. He just said my mission ended at that time. Seven years. That's a hot climate. But we go because we're asked to go and what bigger joy guys to know that you died in your mission place for doing what the Lord asked you to do right when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whoever reads let him understand you know I kind of get a kick out of that no hold on We all say it, right? We all read it and we kind of gloss over it. We just don't go into detail. May I share, I asked, my, my daughter and I had read this at one point and I, it finally just sported out. Hold on yourself, okay? You're probably saying, huh? When I see all that going on and I'm supposed to stand in the holy place, where's the holy place? What if I'm standing in, in uh, I don't know, Newark or in uh, Maine or Philadelphia and I've seen it on TV? Where do I stand? Okay, where you stand. And don't ever forget this, okay, guys? When he went up, he came down. You're the house. Oh, this is rich. You're the temple. You're the tabernacle. You're the Ark of the Covenant. You are standing in the holy place. That means wherever you are, wherever you're at, sanctify the Lord in your heart. Start praying. 